Hello, and welcome to our next lesson on Verilog hardware description language. And in this lesson, I want to explore a little bit about how to use multiple digital logic modules inside a larger module, right? So often we want to create sophisticated designs, and it's difficult to make those designs out of sort of whole cloth. It's better to create smaller, simple, especially testable uh, modules, and then combine them into more sophisticated designs. And so we're gonna see how to do that today. And I think the best way to do that is to do that by looking at uh, implementation of a really simple but useful combinational logic circuit called a line decoder. And so we're gonna make um, one of those. And I've already made a video on the sort of design and implementation of line decoders. So go check out that video. But we'll do a quick recap of what we wanna do here. So I'm gonna create a new file called just decoder.v and We'll get to it. So what I want to make here is called a two to four line decoder, right? And like I said, go look at the other video to see how line decoders are composed. But the punchline here is this going to this is going to include four AND gates on the output and two times some smaller one to two line decoders. So we'll need to take, we'll need to first build these one to two line decoders and then implement them with these AND gates to create a larger one, excuse me, two to four line decoder. So let's go ahead and jump in and let's make those one to two line decoders. So we'll need to create a module. We'll call this decoder one to two. And it has inputs A and D. We'll write our end module declaration. A is an input is only one bit. The output is two bits, so we need to declare it as one to zero to make it two bits. D. And then all we need to do for this one is assign D sub zero is equal to not A. And assign D sub one is equal to A. So that is a one to two line decoder. Now what we need to do is go ahead and test this to make sure it works properly before we use it in our larger design. So we'll need to create a test bench for this one to two decoder. So we'll call it decoder one to two underscore TB dot V. So we do all the same stuff that we've seen before, time scale, one nanosecond, one nanosecond. We need to include the file now it's important to note that we'll include the same file here um, for both modules that we're testing. So even though the modules themselves are different and we'll test them separately, we're still pulling them from the same decoder.v file. So that's what we'll need to include. So we'll say module decoder one to two underscore TB has no input and outputs. End module, we use registers for our inputs, two bit wire to contain our output D. And then we need to instantiate our unit under test, decoder one to two, UUT, tie in A and D. And then we're ready to test, initial begin. Now the first thing we need to do is declare that output dump file. So dump file, decoder one to two dot VCD. Let's make it tb.vcd and then the varies, the dump vars 0, decoder 1 to 2 underscore tb. Now let's do the test. All we need to do here is set a equal to 0 and delay and a equal to 1 and delay. And then as always, I like to write a message that says display end of test. And now we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and pop open the PowerShell here in Visual Studio Code, create our simulation I, Verilog, option O, decoder 12 underscore TB dot VVP. That's the file, the simulation file that's going to, decoder 1 to 2 underscore TB dot V. That's the file we're pulling from. No errors, so life is good. Then we just run the simulation, VVP, 
decoder one two two underscore tb dot vvp. Oh, look at that. It actually produced an error. Look at that. I messed up and it should be dump vars, not dump var. So we need to run that first line decoder. Now the second line vvp. Oh, helps if you save the file. First rule of debugging, always assume that you did something stupid. VVP, there we go. Now we see end of test and life is good. GTK wave to open up our GTK wave waveform viewer. Go ahead and make it full screen. File, open new tab, get that .vcd file. Take a look at reg and wire. And we append. And as we expect, A is equal to zero, zero, one. A is equal to one, one, zero, right? So we see that one walk from place to place. So each midterm is represented here and life is good. So that's our one to two decoder. We've tested it and shown that it is working correctly. Now we're ready to make that two to four decoder. So stay here in the same file. Now you can do different modules in different files. Um, just gotta make sure you do that include statement. We won't do that here. We might do that in a different video though. So here we're going to create our two to four. It also has inputs and outputs A and D in module. It also is worth mentioning that there is no such thing as hoisting in Verilog, so it doesn't matter if we which module we define first. It all sort of gets evaluated at the same time. So here we have input one to zero for A and output three to zero, since the output D is four bits. And now the next thing we need is anytime you have signals connecting within your modules, right? So here we're gonna have the outputs of our internal one to two line decoders need to connect to those AND gates um, before they go to the output. So anytime you have internal signals that are connected, um, we're gonna use a wire to connect those. So I'll go ahead and make a four bit wire signal. I'll call it W for wire. And here we go, let's create our one to two line decoders. So we first give it, we identify the name, then we give it an identifier for the individual module, call this one U0. And then what we do is this, dot A, so that you, the syntax goes like this, the period, and then the symbol that you're referencing inside the module you're creating. And then in parentheses, what you wanna tie it to inside this module. In this case, I wanna tie it to A sub zero. All right, our zeroth bit of the A input to the two to four decoder. And then it's D, I want to attach to the first two bits of my wire. So I'm gonna say wire three to two. And that's all there is to, dis to instantiating a module inside another module. You might notice it looks very similar to how we do it in test benches. And in fact, it's the same mechanism as we do in test benches. So we need to create another one to two decoder. We'll call this one U1. Attach its input now to A1 and its output to the second, the last two bits. So we'll say one to zero of our wire. And now the last thing we need to do is attach those outputs attached to those wires to the AND gates so we can send them to the output. So we'll say assign D sub zero is equal to W3 and W1, right? So the inverted output of both of these logic gates. Then we'll do assign D sub one equals W2 and W1, assign D sub two is equal to W3 and W0. Now you see all I'm doing here is grabbing every possible combination of those wires. So finally D3 is equal to W2 and W0. And that's all we need to do to build this two to four line decoder, right? And we've cre done it by creating two instances of our one to two decoder modules. So the last thing to do here is test this new module. So we'll create a new test bench file, decoder one, two, three, 
decoder to to four underscore tb dot v and we added a boilerplate time scale on one nanosecond one nanosecond we need to include our decoder dot v file we need to create now our module for our test bench decoder two to four underscore tb in module reg one to zero for the inputs. Remember, reg is for inputs, wires for outputs. Um, then we need to create our unit under test decoder two to four ut and initial begin and end. Now create those dump file and dump vars. Dump file, we'll call this decoder two to four underscore tv dot vcd. And dump vars zero. Decoder two to four tb. Now let's do the thing. Now remember our input A here is two bits. So what we need to do is set A equal to the two bit binary number zero zero and then delay and we'll say a is equal to two bit zero one and delay and a is equal to two bit one zero and delay and a is equal to two bit one one and delay so here we sort of walk through every input combination there put our end of test message test and there we go let's go ahead and run the test so I bear along option o, decoder 224tb.bvp decoder 224tb.v no errors vvp Decoder two to four underscore tb dot vvp. End of test means it's good. GTK wave to open it up and take a look. Go to file, open new tab, grab our VCD file, and grab our signals. And here we go. So we can see as we go from zero to one to two to three. The number here walks from eight to four to two to one. Now, if you know your binary, this seems correct, but actually sometimes it's useful to sort of see it in a different radix. So for example, if I go over here and right click on the D signal, go to data format and switch it to binary, then it actually makes a little more sense. I can actually see the one sort of walking across as the input increments. And that shows us that we're getting the correct output behavior for our input um, variables. So there we go. We know our two to four decoder is working properly. We've tested it, life is good. Um, and that's all there is to it. So just to kind of recap real quick, the point of this was to explore how to create modules within modules, right? So we created a simpler module, the one to two decoder using the sort of techniques we've already looked at. And then we created two of them inside our two to four decoder using the syntax, right? The name of the module, some kind of identifier for the instance of the module, then inside the parentheses dot, and then the name of the variable you're tying to in the module that you're creating, and then in parentheses what you're tying it to out here, and that's all there is to it. Um, we've instantiated modules inside modules, we've run our test benches, we've used some combinational logic, we've used wires to connect internal signals inside of our module, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if not, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.